this is gonna be really interesting. How's it going everybody? My name is Eric and welcome to Out of the Groove. Today is part two of reacting to NASCAR Race Hub's top 50 drivers of all time. If you missed it yesterday, I talked about their drivers. They ranked 26th through 50th. That's what they did the other day on Monday. On Tuesday's show, they went through numbers 25 through 1. So that's what we're talking about today. But if you missed that first half, go check that out before this and then come back because oh, I've seen the list. I've already seen the list and it's Oh, it's gonna be debatable. It's gonna be, it's gonna be interesting. So let's just get into it. You guys already know the drill. I'll put up the names. Here are the people, again, who voted on this list. You know, some past drivers, a few current drivers, some, you know, reporters, analysts, people like that. So it's an interesting mix. So now, let's take a look at the top, I guess we're now down to the top 25 drivers in NASCAR history. Let, let's do this. All right, like yesterday, we're gonna do five at a time. At 25, they had Joe Weatherly at 24, Dale Jarrett, 23, Fireball Roberts, 22, Bobby Isaac, and 21, Matt Kenseth. Oh, my boy made the list! And at number 21, which I think is a pretty fair assessment of where Matt Kenseth should be. He's top, I think he's tied for 20th in all-time wins. He has a championship, two Daytona 500s. Pretty good resume. He was the Rookie of the Year as well. Beat a couple drivers. He beat Dale Earnhardt Jr. for Rookie of the Year, so that's notable. Uh, so 21 for Matt. I'll take it. I was going to be mad if they didn't put him in the top 30. I was hoping maybe, after yesterday's video, I was hoping maybe they'd put him in the top 20. I think you could maybe debate, especially looking at who they put at 20th. I think you could have put Kenseth at 20th. I would put Kenseth at 20th. But that's just me. I'm definitely slightly biased, but I think I think 21 sounds good for Matt. Looking at this list, Fireball Roberts, Bobby Isaac, I didn't watch them race, but looking at stats and histor historical you know, re retellings. I, this seems about right for them. This is about where I always kind of considered them mid twenties, I guess, around this same mix. So I think they make sense. Dale Jarrett's one I think maybe is a little low. Maybe bump him up to twenty second or twenty third. That's the only change I would make here. He had a championship. You know, I, I think I, 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 that's really the only change I would make to this list currently. The, the, this top twenty five is not too bad. Weatherly at twenty five, okay, okay, makes sense. Yeah, I, I don't know. I just I think maybe I'd bump Kenseth up to twenty, and I'd maybe move Dale Jarrett around twenty second. But at the end of the day, I'm just glad that Matt Kenseth is on this list. That's nice to see. So moving on, at number 20, they had Tim Flock, 19, Mark Martin, uh, 18, they had Kevin Harvick, 17, Bill Elliott, and 16 was Buck Baker. Mark Martin's one of those drivers, one of the best drivers ever to not win a championship. He had 40 wins in his career, which is a good amount, top 20 in all time all time list. He had five runner-up finishes in the point system. Oh, five times he came this close to winning the championship, but not quite. And he was always one of the most popular guys in the sport, one of the most likable, one of the most, you know, the, the best, you know, a lot of the drivers considered him kind of a mentor to a lot of young drivers getting getting into the series. Mark Martin, I think he also might be just a little low on this list, but I, you know, he's about right. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna get too ornery about that placement. Interestingly, at 18, you have Kevin Harvick, who has 40 wins, just like Mark Martin, but he does have a championship. So it's interesting to see how that one championship is enough to pass him up. I guess Harvick is still still an active driver. He's still got a couple years left. Good chance he wins a few more races, probably. Might even win another championship, and he's looking like he could this season, actually. So I can understand Harvick being ahead of Mark Martin, but I, I, I am surprised Harvick. I, I guess I'm not surprised looking at really looking at the stats. I do think it's interesting we kind of ignore. Harvick had a lull in his career that I feel like we kind of ignore sometimes, but that's okay. That's fine. He's been great recently. Really, since he got over Stuart Haas Racing, he has seen a major boost in his career. That's where he won his first championship a few years ago, and that's why he's looked like a championship contender the last couple of years. So, yeah, Harvick's definitely had a boost, but it's funny that we kind of forget, if they'd made this list five years ago, he probably may not even be in the top 50, to be honest. Bill Elliott at 17 with 44 wins and one championship. Yep, I think that makes sense. More wins than Harvick and a championship as well. I think right now he stays ahead of Harvick, and, you know, Bill Elliott was, what, how many times in a row did he win the most popular driver? Like 16 times, something like that? I know that doesn't really factor into this list, but, I, you know, it's worth mentioning. I'll be curious to see if Kevin Harvick ever surpasses Bill Elliott on this list, because Harvick, like I said, has a couple years left. He could pass him in wins, and if that happens, then maybe Harvick will take that spot. Buck Baker at 16. He had 46 wins. Yeah, makes sense to me. Let's let's move on to the next uh, next set. At 15, they have Junior Johnson. 14 was Rusty Wallace. 13, Herb Thomas. 12th, Kyle Busch. And 11th, Ned Jarrett. Now, this is where things get a little bit debatable. I think Junior Johnson at 15 is okay. Rusty Wallace at 14 and Herb Thomas at 13. Mm, especially that you got Kyle Busch there at 12th. 
This is where you can you can make a debate here. Herb Thomas has 48 wins. Rusty Wallace finished with 55 wins. Both currently, that's more wins than Kyle Busch has. Kyle only has 43 cup wins. He's obviously got a good handful of years left. So I think that's that's a fair assessment. Rusty Wallace only has one championship. Kyle Busch has one championship. So in that case, maybe I think you can make the argument, especially with Kyle Busch's 91 Xfinity wins, which I'm not going to put that much value on, but I'll put a little bit of value on it. I can maybe understand why Kyle Busch is ahead of Rusty Wallace. I'm not going to get too nuts about that. But Herb Thomas... I know he raced in a lot older era. He had two championships, which I, I feel like this list is very inconsistent by how much they weigh championships. I talked yesterday, where they, especially with how they ranked Martin Truex Jr. ahead of a few drivers. It felt like they were giving championships a lot of a lot of weight behind them, a lot of meaning in a championship. That meant a lot. That really helped your ranking. We'll see a little bit here and a little bit further onto this list, I think. We'll see how that kind of becomes inconsistent. It seems like they only sometimes think championships are important. Other times they seem to not think they're that important at all. So, well, this is this is very debatable, especially considering what's going on down further on the list. I, I'm not going to move it around too much, but you can at least have a discussion that maybe Herb Thomas should be ahead of Kyle Busch, Ned Jarrett up there. Kyle Busch, though, he's, he's great, and he's got a lot of years left. I mean, if he can continue to have sponsorship and continue to hold on to that seat at JGR or in a competitive car like I think he's capable of, he could race another 10 to 15 years and win three or four more championships, honestly. At that point, we might be debating him as a top three, top five driver of all time. I kind of expect it. So now we're going to get into the top 10. Top 10 drivers in NASCAR history. Let's do it. At number 10, they put Lee Petty. At number 9, Tony Stewart. At number 8, Bobby Allison, number seven, Cale Yarbrough, and number six was Daryl Waltrip. Ooh, and now this is already getting interesting. I know they raced in very different eras, but Lee Petty and Tony Stewart both have three championships, but Lee Petty had more wins. And keep in mind, Tony Stewart never won a Daytona 500, so he, you know, he, he's missing a big crown jewel, which I know it's just the Daytona 500, but a lot, we put a lot of emphasis on that race. And Tony didn't have one of those, so you, you know, I, mm, I'm a little surprised that they got put. I guess they're valuing Tony Stewart raced in, I guess, a more competitive era, so maybe I'll give him the break uh, in that sense. It honestly kind of surprised me. I thought Tony Stewart had more wins. I didn't know he only had 49 cup wins. I thought he had like 50 or 60, honestly. I kind of, all right. Six through eight there, I actually pretty much agree with. I feel like you could kind of, I think eight, Bobby Allison, he has 84 wins. That's that's a ton of wins, three Daytona 500s, but he only has one championship. And then you compare that to Cale Yarbrough, Daryl Waltrip, they both have three championships each, and they're all basically right there in wins. Both Bobby Allison and Daryl Waltrip have 84 wins each, Cale Yarbrough, Yarbrough has 83, so they're all like, right, they're dead even in a lot of sense. I honestly, I, I basically, I agree with that part of the list. It's actually, other than the Stuart Lee Petty, I might swap those two. This still makes sense. This top five though, it's gonna get pretty wild. Let, let, let's, let's, I we gotta talk about it. The top five greatest drivers in NASCAR history. At number five, they put Dale Earnhardt. Number four, Jeff Gordon. Number three, David Pearson. Number two, Jimmy Johnson. And number one, the king, Richard Petty. Oh, oh my God, are you kidding me with this? This is, this is blasphemous. Dale Earnhardt, a seven time champion, tied for the all-time lead in most championships in cup history, is fifth. No disrespect to Jeff Gordon, David Pearson. I think you can maybe argue D David Pearson versus Dale Earnhardt because David Pearson had 105 wins. Dale Earnhardt only had 76. I say only, that's 76 wins. You can maybe make an argument there, but why? No disrespect to Jeff Gordon. Why is Jeff Gordon ahead of Dale Earnhardt? Who made... Who made this list? Jeff Gordon has more wins. 93 wins for Gordon versus 76 for Dale Earnhardt. Give him the edge there. That's significant. That is a significant, you know, amount of wins to have over a guy. But seven titles opposed, as opposed to four titles. And keep in mind, I go back, like I kind of talked about with Harvick, Jeff Gordon had kind of a lull in his career. He won all four of those titles by the end of 2001. He raced 14 years after that with no titles and especially the last few years of his career, you know, he wasn't the most competitive car out there. He was a fifth to eighth place car at best. And I don't mean to give him too much grief for that. I know a lot of you are Jeff Gordon fans. Jeff Gordon definitely deserves to be in the top five here, at least in fourth or fifth here. But he should not, in anybody's mind, be ahead of Dale Earnhardt Sr. Jeff Gordon won a lot of big races. I get it, but this is what I'm talking about with inconsistency on this list. They gave Martin Truex Jr. the nod over a few guys because he had one championship. Meanwhile, here's Dale Earnhardt with seven championships as opposed to four for Gordon. Four is nothing to scoff at, don't get me wrong, but that's three more championships than this guy, and they're going to put him behind him on the list. He doesn't have, I mean, 76 versus 93 wins, 17 win difference. That's significant, but when you look at how high they're up, they're both gods. <laughs> 
I'm the kind of guy I like to reward a little bit of consistency. And if you win seven championships, that means that seven seasons where you had to be consistent, you had to be on your game throughout the season. And obviously he won a ton of races. I don't get it. I don't get it. This is, I'm a, I don't get it. I'm at a loss for words here. I don't know how, how we let this list exist. I'll try to let it go. I'll try to let it go. Like I said, you could make a serious argument for whether or not Dale Earnhardt should be third or fourth. I think David Pearson, you know, the 105 wins and I think what, like 574 starts. I think he has one of the, if not the greatest winning percentages among like drivers. He has a better winning percentage than Richard Petty. So that is definitely something that should be rewarded. Don't get me wrong. And three championships is also nothing to scoff at as well. But again, they're, they're, they're kind of being weird about how they put value on championships. They're not being super consistent here in this list. But I think you can make an argument between David Pearson and Dale Earnhardt for third. I I would probably put Dale Earnhardt third, but I would make I you can make a very serious argument. So I get that. And then of course we've got to talk about number one and number two. I mentioned yesterday how I thought likely it was very likely they were going to put Richard Petty at one, and I'm not super surprised to see Richard Petty in first place here. But I've been saying this for a while. You can make an argument for Jimmy Johnson. And in fact, a couple guys during the show, during the Race Hub show earlier today or yesterday, depending on when you're watching this, I guess. Uh, you know, Larry Mack. Uh, Casey Mears, I think Adam Alexander said that they had Jimmy Johnson actually at number one. And, you know, it's not a crazy thought. He's only got 83 wins, but let's keep in mind Jimmy Johnson's got still at least a couple years left. And, you know, maybe only a couple years left. And I know he doesn't look that good this season. And I'll, I will hold that against him that he has not looked very good for now the last year. I hold that against him, don't get me wrong. But 83 wins in probably the most competitive era of NASCAR ever. That deserves a lot of praise. Not to mention, you know, the seven titles is big, but five in a row across multiple different cars. He, he did that at the Gen 4 cars, the Gen 5 cars. He had a wing on it for a couple of those championships. He didn't for a couple others. He won in multiple different types of cars against the best the sport had to offer. He did it five times in a row across a couple slightly different playoff formats even. And then if you factor in his 2013 and 2016 championships, that's like seven championships across three or four different playoff formats. I mean, NASCAR has made tons of changes over the last few years just to stop him from winning. And it hasn't worked. So you gotta give Jimmy Johnson a lot of respect. If Jimmy Johnson in his last couple years here manages to win an eighth title, I think all bets are off at this point. He should be the number one NASCAR driver of all time in most people's eyes. There's always going to be people who think, there's people who think Jeff Gordon or Tony Stewart's the greatest driver of all time. You know, you can't argue. Some people are going to have different opinions there. But I think in the vast majority, right now, Richard Petty is widely considered to be the best driver ever. And I think that's understandable. I can understand that. But I think if Jimmy does win an eighth championship, which he could, I actually picked him to win a championship this year. I did that before the season started. I'm regretting it now. But I think he still has it in him at some point in the next couple of years. If Jimmy wins an eighth championship, I think he should officially take over the crown as the widely considered best driver in NASCAR history. That's just me, but Jimmy's had a great career. He deserves to be top two. I, I'm okay with him being second. Uh, Richard Petty being one makes sense to me. The Richard Petty, 200 wins. Granted, they came, came, in a, came in an era that was probably not as, there weren't as many great cars as there are today, but it was a different era and there's a different type of skill. And hey, you got to reward a guy for dominating his era. Jimmy dominated his, you know, Dale, Jeff, they've dominated their eras. Richard Petty dominated his. I understand it. So there you guys have it. That is Fox Sports' NASCAR Race Hub's top 50 drivers of all time. Today, I just went through top 25. I agree with a lot of it. It's hard to disagree with some of it, but a couple of them, especially Dale Earnhardt, that's just... That's just disrespectful right there. That's just, man. But anyway, let me know what you guys think. Give me your opinions down below. Do you think some of those drivers were a little lower, a little higher maybe than they should have been? Uh, what do you think of what I said? I don't know. Maybe I'm talking nonsense and Dale Earnhardt, Dale Earnhardt should be like ninth. Brad Keselowski on the show, I think, has said he had Dale Earnhardt like ranked sixth. Actually, no, it was eighth. Brad Keselowski said Dale Earnhardt should be eighth. What are you smoking, Brad? Anyway, I'm not going to get too uppity about that anymore. I've already, I've already vented enough. I don't, I can't fathom. It's, it's blasphemy that Dale Earnhardt is, a, is, is where he is in these rankings. That's end of story. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, I'll be back actually later this week, probably tomorrow, with picks for Texas Motor Speedway. Also, NASCAR today uh, released the 2019 schedule, and I might talk a little bit about that as well tomorrow. I'll be doing a podcast, actually, I guess today. If you're watching this on Wednesday, it'll be later today at 8 p.m. Eastern over on uh, Danny B. Talks' channel. I'll try to put a link to it in the description below. I'll be on a podcast with them this week. You can come in there, join live, ask questions, all that type of stuff. I'll also put a link in the description. My sister's up for a scholarship, an art scholarship. She's trying to get to school, and uh, that's a big deal for her and my family. So if you are willing, 
Click the link down below. Give her a vote for uh, the scholarship. That I'd appreciate that. She'd appreciate that. And uh, thanks for all the support, guys. I'll see you guys uh, later this week. Have a great one.